Hello everybody, this is Kyrex with another episode of This Week in Kyrex. This is for the week of Wednesday, November 25th, 2020, and it is now Thanksgiving, November 26th, 2020. And, uh, yeah, I was doing something. I don't remember if I accomplished much. I know I had resources, such as they were. We're gonna rest until night. At least for now. So, um, I had a motherfucker of a week. And yesterday was the quote unquote end of it, even though I work Friday. Um, oh my god, I got myself into some serious goddamn trouble at work, actually. Whoop, me in trouble? Yeah, me. Um,. So, how this came about is embarrassingly simple. Um, first off, I have been very much at odds with my current managers. And, uh, yeah. Alright, somewhere around here are some aloe leaves. I just gotta find them real quick. There we go, perfect. Um, basically the gist of it is, um, well, let me, let me heal my monkeys first. It's you. No, give me that. Here we go. Alright, so I'm going to pause so I can concentrate. The gist of it is micromanagement. I have a very simple job, there's not much to it, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is pull carts in. And yet, this manager and one of her assistants, uh, we now have coaches for the, the manager and team leads for the supervisors that work under the manager. Now, one of the team leads, I only know two of them directly. One of them, I get along with just fine. I chat with her, you know, during the the thing and she knows how to quote unquote handle me basically she tells me what she needs done and trusts me to make it happen which is what you should do the other team lead has something she wants done and she's going to tell me how to do it the problem is none of them including the one i get along with has ever worked a single shift as a cart pusher much less at a store like ours that is fucking huge and understaffed in the cart pusher department. So she is going off a book that is written with more people in mind. The other team leader is smart enough to realize, hey, I don't have experience doing this job. These guys do. I'm going to let them do their thing because it works. But uh, the coach also tried micromanaging this way. They want me to man the GM entrance, the pharmacy entrance, the general merchandise entrance. We have two entrances. GM, which opens around 9 or 10 in the morning, compared to 7 in the morning for the store itself, and closes around 8 p.m. It's not even open all day. That's how underutilized it is. Well, the problem with this, and it's not that I don't like being assigned an entrance. Like, if they assign me to grocery, that's fine because grocery depletes. General merchandise does not. Outside of high traffic days, and that's the kicker, and you know when the high traffic days are within an hour of working, like you can tell. Outside of a high traffic day, you generally fill GM twice a shift. That's twice in an eight hour block that it needs filled. And they want to permanently, for my shift, have me stationed there. My problem with this is that if I agree to work for money, I want to work for that money. And working in that section guarantees that I'm going to spend 80% of my day sitting on my ass. There's also the fact that it doesn't utilize my skill set at all. And that'll tie into the trouble in just a minute. 
My skill set is that I am the best and most efficient stacker in that store. Within the span of an hour, I can stack every cart in the lot. And I don't mean just the front lot. I mean the front lot, both side lots, the back lot, and the super front lot that nobody fucking goes into. Because we have this, this sort of a quarter lot that is street side, as opposed to the, the main parking lot, which covers parking lot distance from the store. It is basically an extra parking lot on top of the parking lot we have. And there are maybe five carts a day in that area, but nobody fucks with them except for me. I'm the only one who goes that far out, grabs them, and pulls them back into the pool of carts. Give me an hour, and I will sweep that whole place and have everything stacked except the stuff that comes out after I leave that area. Or you can have me mule in carts, and I can bring in maybe four stacks an hour, it feels like. It's a lot more than that, but that's what it feels like, because I spend most of my time stacking, and then I have to get the mule and get it and wrestle with the fucking thing because it hates me and I don't know how to drive it, etc. And again, the flip side is, you have me on stacking duty, and then my assistant, my partner, runs the mule and grabs all my stacks. And while he's hauling one stack into the store, I've got two more lined up for him to take in. And it just becomes this never-ending thing. Well, Monday, Monday's the shift where all this shit went down. It's the one where I got into the big argument and where I got into trouble. Monday, all right, let me backtrack for a minute. My boss, my manager, my coach, and her quote-unquote pet team lead share the same problem. They are bosses and not leaders. They are more concerned with being in charge than doing the things required of them. They don't want me to do the job well. They want me to acknowledge that they are in charge and to do it their way, whether it works or not. And as we're going to see in a minute, their way doesn't work. So I clock in... So this, this boss... Um, I won't get into the specifics right now. I may have covered it in a previous week. But rather than make a schedule for me this week, because I was only billed to work eight hours... And that was on a Friday. And that was on Cap 2. So rather than correct this with several weeks in advance that she could have done it, she tells me, well, that's your schedule. If you want hours, pick up shifts. So I had to cobble together this hell week of shifts. And I actually missed five and a half hours of that shift. And I'll get into that in a minute, too. But I had to cobble together this 39 and a half hour schedule that had two double shifts, one of which is Friday. It's it's not a big deal. It's a normal shift preceded by a two-hour shift with a two-hour break. So basically, it's a 12-hour shift. I've done those before. It's not a big deal. Monday, however, was a 12-hour shift in that it was a six-and-a-half-hour shift and a five-and-a-half-hour shift. But each one of them also had a lunch hour, and there was two hours between the shifts, making it a 16-hour day. I clocked in at 6.30 in the morning and was supposed to clock out at 10.30 in the morning. I actually left at 9 because by that point, by 8.30, I was so fucking tanked that I went up to the, the supervisor in charge and basically said, excuse me, can I please use my PTO to clock out an hour and a half early? He's like, it's your call, dude. Because <laughs> I'm like, I've, wor I've been here 15 hours. I've pulled my time. Please let me go home. And he just let me. So no big deal. So anyway, Monday, I get in there, clock in at 6.30. I get there, let's say 6.20 or so. I had a little time. And I get out in the lot, and the night before, I think I was there late. I can actually look. I've got my schedule right here. I, I'm pretty sure I was there fairly late for me. They no longer booked me on a full 11 o'clock shift. But I was there late enough that I was actively contributing to shit. No, I left at 7.00. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, the guy who was on duty that night, the night before, did a great job. So, all the carts were lined up, so I basically went over to GM's side, which was locked at the time, opened up the dock, pushed all the carts that were outside of it inside, closed the dock back up so that when it opened, there were four full rows out of a possible five. 
it was stocked it was fine so we've got another guy on duty he clocked in at 7 or 7 30 it was one of the two the the exact time doesn't matter he clocked in around op opening time and he is really good with the mule he sees me out there he's like okay this is gonna be a good day Kyrex is out there stacking carts i'm gonna haul him in we're not gonna have a problem and we didn't i had that entire lot on fucking lockdown literally since everything was stacked because i had everything stacked and hauled in beforehand as shit was coming out i was adding it to stacks and occasionally customers themselves would see the stack i'm like oh carts go here and i love when they do that even when they put them in backwards it it saves me like five minutes <laughs> Even when you put him in backwards, it saves me time. I appreciate it. So I'm doing good. He's doing good. We've got it on lock. And I can already tell it's going to be a light traffic day. So out comes this team lead. You know, she's like, hey, Kyrex, I, I'm, I want you to work the GM side today. And my exact words were to her, to her were, I think that's a waste of manpower or a waste of resources, but okay. Note, but okay, as in, I think that's a stupid idea, but you're in charge, I will do it. And she got really pissed at me. Like, really pissed. Because I dared suggest that a stupid idea was in fact stupid. I didn't pretend that it was a fantastic idea. And I wasn't dissenting, I wasn't saying, I'm not going to do it, that's stupid, that's a waste of my talents. I said, that is a waste of my talents, but I will do it. And I said as much when two minutes later she dragged me into the office with the boss. And here's the thing about me. I'm not saying this sound like, oh, I'm a total badass or anything. I don't intimidate just because you can fire me. That's the thing. If you are my boss and you tell me to do something stupid, I'm going to tell you that is stupid. Period. And I did this with pretty much all but two of my managers on cap 2 who are all men so it's not just she's a woman I did this to the guys too and the reason those two never got this treatment is they were the managers and didn't work directly with me like the supervisors did so they didn't really tell me to do anything dumb so it never came up but the supervisors all three of them fucking did and it came up and I've had arguments with all fucking three of them you know <clears throat> but uh, she calls me in there with the boss and the boss I say with the boss it might have been a requirement that the boss be in there you know especially since I'm a guy she's a woman they might think oh he could beat the shit out of her or that might just be standard regardless of gender I don't know I'm not in management I don't know what the policies are but she drags the boss in and from her posture it seems pretty clear to me that she's thinking okay I've got the boss here he's gonna calm down no it's a stupid idea and I told them both to their face and they kept trying to shut me down I'm like no you won't let me talk you need to let me finish here because there's I, there's something I'm actually saying I said look you are wasting my talents here because you are telling me work exclusively on this door and it doesn't fill up or it doesn't empty out as fast as the other ones so basically you're paying me to sit on my ass for an entire shift because she specifically said we are not a team we do not work together which implies to me as an employee do not go out and stack cards do not assist the other gate and then she backtracked well of course if you're out of if you're full of cards go help i'm like you literally just told me not to do that and i said and that's the instruction you were missing because you don't know what you're doing basically i didn't say that part but i was thinking it but anyway they they were real upset with me like you don't take orders i'm like uh the other person doesn't have any trouble giving me orders because she knows what she's doing that's not the part that got me in trouble the part that got me in trouble was at the middle of the second half of that shift um i had to deal with what even was it? I just had to do shit, basically. There we go. 
<clears throat> I, I just had to bring in cards because they ordered me to. You know. Gotta do what the fucking boss says, regardless of whether it's smart or not. So anyway, they're, they're having me haul in carts. And a lot of the parking lot's on an incline, so at some point the carts will just escape the mule, and that's what happened here. So I leave the mule behind. It's near a curb. That's going to be important in a moment. It's near the curb, and I know from experience the mule can't really fuck with the curb that well. Basically, it will stall if it brushes against it. But I also know from taking carts inside that if you give it the chance, it will just brush up against it and the curb will correct its motion and it'll just go straight. That's going to be important in a moment. Now, my boots that I'm in right now, I, I switched them as of today to the old boots. I just pulled the insoles out and put them in the old boots. But my boots are a little too small for my feet now that the insoles were in. They were fine before, though they did leave the bottom of my feet hurting. Feet? The bottom of my feet. Really, Kyrix? Your feet. Okay, they left the bottom of my feet hurting. I'm an idiot. Uh, they left the bottom of my feet hurting. And ooh, there's a candy. More importantly, I wonder if it leads to water. So anyway, uh, bottom of my feet are hurting. I don't want, or the tops of my feet are hurting in this case, because the, the insoles made me a little taller inside the shoe. The problem with that is, now, uh, the tops of my shoes are squeezing the fuck out of my feet. So. Anyway, I don't want to walk all the way up, and it's only like another two feet. I don't want to walk up and deal with the mule, so I push the button to call it to me. Now, don't be impressed, it doesn't have a homing signal that's like, oh, you're over here. It just moves forward. But it was in a place that, in my experience, it should just move forward towards me, and that's that. You know, no big fucking deal. Oh no, those are spent coconuts. Well, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it, some of us are just gonna have more water than the rest. Anyway, um, I push the button, and the mule decides that it's going to fucking ramp. Yeah, it jumps the curb like a goddamn ramp. Right into somebody's bumper. I was unaware it could get that kind of airtime. Now, I naturally inspect the bumper, and find that as soon as I pull the card away, it has folded exactly back into place. I'm thinking, oh, okay, damage isn't that severe. Let me take care of this shit, and then I'll go report it. Well, a customer saw it and reported it before I had the chance to. I saw him go out and do that. I fell into step behind the associate that he did that to, and basically told her, yep. And she's like, well, you're gonna need to come with me? I'm like, I figured as much. So here's the thing, when I fuck up, I own up to it. I don't want to. But I do it. It's part of integrity and it's part of responsibility. So they call me in there and basically tell me what I already knew, which was, since this was a customer, this could very well be my job, and that's that. That's all there is to it. Uh, and if not, it's still a really big deal. I can have three write-ups. This counts as two minimum, and possibly as many as three. So this is enough to potentially get me fired. Now, it all depends on how the customer took the whole thing, which apparently the customer took it well enough, because I still have my job. But it could have gone significantly worse than it
So basically that that added up. Now um So I, I mentioned that I would talk about the uh the reason I missed my shift today, the five and a half hour shift. And it's it's Willow. Willow was a fucking goblin today. She's been a little shit goblin all day. It's gotten to the point where I've started calling her goblin. I've been calling her that almost exclusively all day. Like, where'd that fucking goblin go? She's a brat. I love her, but she's a goddamn brat, and she drives me nutters. So, what happened was... I'm ready to go to work. Like, I have... You know, it's it's 4 o'clock. I'm supposed to leave at 4 o'clock, get there at 5 o'clock in, stay till 10.30. Not a big deal. I've done it a thousand times. Well, not at this time, but you know what I mean. I have plenty of time to get to work, etc. So, oh, please tell me, please, 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 please. Is this actual water? Oh, yeah. Pick up all our stuff. So anyway, every now and then, and cat owners will be able to sympathize with this, it abruptly occurs to you, I haven't seen one of the cats in a while. That's concerning, especially when it's sort of an out-of-character mode. Willow is famous for her habit of hearing a door and running to it. And meanwhile... I managed to get completely unscathed out of the fucking house. And that's not normal. Not for Willow. So what I end up doing is I realize, oh no, Willow is MIA. And I start looking through the whole house for her. And I'm not seeing her anywhere. And then it occurs to me... Earlier, I had a pizza delivered, and she may have gotten out when the roommate was doing, doing the pizza. So I began searching the immediate area around the neighborhood. Speaking of delivery, here comes dinner. I always wince at that part. I'm sorry, baby, but you literally walked into that. You literally fucking walked into that. It's not even an excuse for that shit. So, I, I have to, uh... Willow occasionally responds to voice, but she really responds to bells. Like, you jingle a bell, she'll come out. And I, I'm sitting here, I've got the laser pointer because we don't have a bell at the moment. And I'm, you know, clacking the, the keychain around it because that sometimes brings her, I'm clicking it. Even though it's too bright to really see the laser because that noise will bring her running as well. I'm doing everything I know to do and it's not working. And so uh, it gets to the point where... I basically decide, because at this point at 4.30, I'm like, I'm I'm not getting there on time. It's just not fucking happening. So I decide I'm going to have to call out of work, because I cannot find this cat. And I will not function at work if she's missing. If I know my cat is wandering the fucking neighborhood, with fuck knows what going on with her, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to think straight. I'm not going to be able to concentrate on my job, something bad's gonna happen, and I'm gonna get fired. You know, it's just not worth it. I'll take the point. I'll call out of work. Because I'd be getting a half point anyway for coming in late. Though I did check my uh, things. I had 15 minutes, and it was possible, once I did find her, and I did, it was possible that I could just get away with it. You know, I could, I could get in there, get my PTO thing and just be fine, and then it occurs to me, you know what? I've had a motherfucker of a week, and I don't want to go in today, you know? So I just called out. But yeah, uh, Willow, it turns out, 
was under the sink the entire time. Because fuck me, right? And speaking of animals behaving badly, remember how I ordered a pizza? I had a piece left, and it was sitting on the bed next to me in its box for several hours. And nobody fucked with it. The cats laid on the box, they do that. Dog laid near the box, she does that. So I get up thinking, okay, I'm going to take this pizza into work. I don't have a lunch break today, which is why I ordered the pizza. But I'm going to put this away and take it to work with me, and that'll be my food. So I go out to get a baggie to put it in so I can carry it with my shit. Come back, and here's Maya nomming on the pizza. So she gets the shit slapped out of her. And she's in her kennel. She's been in her kennel since about 4 o'clock p.m. I let her out at about midnight, took her outside to walk. Also, no food for her today. I pulled her food, dumped it in the cat bowl. Uh, she fed herself. She doesn't need food. That's just how this fucking works right now. And it might be cruel, but I don't care. I don't let my animals steal shit. You know, that's the one thing they all know is off limits. That if you steal food, you get severely punished. And Maya does it all the time. You know? Because very rarely has one of the cats been punished for that shit. Oreo has. She's been punished for it a couple times. And she's smart enough to know, oh, shit, better not do that anymore if I want to eat. Because I've seriously locked her in her carrier while I fed the other pets. And when all the food was gone, she came back out. So. I do not fuck around with thieving animals. I just do not. No. That is the deal breaker. And that comes for stealing attention as well. I do not let my animals get away with stealing attention from each other. If one animal is being petted and another animal comes in and tries to steal that hand, that animal gets ignored. And all of my pets have learned pretty quickly that it's not tolerated. Do not do that. It will get you nowhere. Nowhere that you want to be anyway. I'm just gonna feed you idiots. Yeah, I figured as much. So you three get to eat, and the rest must go down. That's your prize. Gonna make a sleeping spot here. Gonna make it right here, actually, because this looks cozy as fuck. So yeah, it's just Maya got in trouble for that shit. Ah, thorn bushes that's all. Maya got in actually pretty big trouble for that shit. Uh, Willow was a little goblin who kept me from going to work today. And I got stuff for Thanksgiving. I got a turkey. I didn't want a turkey. I wanted a turkey breast. But A, Walmart didn't have them. And just on a whim, I looked at one of the, the full butterball turkeys thing, and oh, this is gonna be like 30 bucks. No, it was 15. And I went there expecting to spend like $9 on a turkey. I'm like, well, fuck, it's just 5 bucks more than I was gonna spend anyway. I'm gonna get the whole turkey. So, that's the thing. Um, I have been playing until dawn. I am, I believe, 5 out of 10 chapters into playthrough number 2 for what that's worth. Uh, playthrough number two is a uh, guided playthrough where I look at, you know, all the shit that I missed and get it. Yes, I realize I'm hungry. I'll get to that. That's not what I wanted. Actually, that could be really useful. 
Where are the sticks? They're over here. Okay. Everybody grab a piece of meat. And everybody eat a piece of meat. Since we killed that uh, marauding saber cat, I don't think we're going to be fucked with right away. Something will come after us eventually, but I think we bought ourselves a day or two of this. Because they don't seem to spawn in immediately like that. They just kind of happen and they're gone. Now, since I am the troop leader, I'm going to eat twice. Plus, you know, I did kind of kill and skin the animal, so I get extra. I've got to keep me strong since I'm the main one fighting and crafting and exploring and shit. We'll just ignore the fact that I kind of killed the tribe for a while by not finding a source of water. By leading us first into the desert and then a desert that was full of water. Meaning the beach. Oh, lovely, this meat's rotten. Lovely, don't care. I'ma live my life in a big green haze. Fuck it. Every monkey gonna slurp some goop. Until the food poisoning goes away. Yeah, it's the first time in a very long time that all our needs were met. We're just gonna slurp the fuck up. Because that's what we do. I'm just drinking away the food poisoning. Don't mind me. What's that I've been singing? Predator shit? Yeah, it's the predator shit. By the way, I love the way I, I occasionally cheese my way out of a bad situation by like, okay, we're all going to die. Let's have babies. <laughs> you know, let's let's breed in this bad situation so that everyone will be healed because I know that's the case. Like, oh, this monkey's going to die without medical attention. Let's advance 12 fucking years. He'll be fine. You know, we have no water. Boom. Worst part is it fucking works. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I am having fun with this, but I'm also kind of looking forward to jump in the farm simulator because while being a lot more boring, that's also kind of the point. And it's just going to be easier to keep track of. Like, there's not going to be situations like, oh, I need this thing. And if I decide I need to learn a new mechanic, like I want to raise animals, I get to make a save file where I test out those mechanics, you know. It's not rocket science. Let's kick step, kick step, potty roll. Alright. You know what? I don't have the time or the inclination to whip up some aloe goop. Maybe if this were a more permanent settlement or if I had more granite so that we could each make our own. Sure, but not right now. So, I did a thing. I spent money more than I should probably on Star Trek Online again. I decided, because we've got like a Thanksgiving slash Black Friday sale, so I could splurge a little bit. Basically get $10 of, of uh, currency for $7. Which saves a lot, actually, in the long run. 
Um, I don't know what made me decide, but I abruptly decided that I wanted vacation ships. Probably because I'm doing mini runs on the Klingons where I play as the, the member races. Like, oh, I want a Gorn captain with Gorn ships starting in, at uh, Tier 4, you know. Just use all the Gorn ships. I want Nausikans with Nausikan ships. The Farassan ships, Orions with Orion ships, that kind of shit. And I do technically already have all the Vulcan ships. Uh, so I could do that with the Vulcans if I so chose. But I got just this wild bug up my ass that I wanted the Cation ships. And I could get them for basically $36. Because the actual price would have been 50 before the sale. <clears throat> Again, because of the sale, $36. And that struck me as a bit of a bargain, considering that they were a Tier 5 and a Tier 6 ship, and that was about 50 bucks pre-sale, you know. Plus, I, I now have the ships, and I don't know why it is... But for whatever reason, I just permanently have access to as many Cations as I want now. Like, just for shits and giggles, I made a Cation captain with a full Cation crew. And normally they'd have cost me, like, $4.50 a pop. But I just have to. Yeah, we're just not making it to the top of this cliff from this direction. It's just not happening. Guess we're going around then. Now watch, this is where I'm going to lose my fucking tribe. It's stuck on the mountain or some stupid bullshit. I've had dumber things happen to me in this game. Worst part is, I don't even know where I'm fucking going. Where it is I think I'm going. There's nowhere to go. Did, did I just do a loop? No, because there were only two trees here, I want to say? Near the water source? Yeah, there was only two trees, so I found this is a new area. Is that mud? Nope, not mud. That's sad. Sam. I need you? No. So are we sea monkeys? Probably not. Fuck it, maybe we are settling here. There's food here. That's right, Muscle Beach. There's the beach full of mussels. It's not great, but it's food. I mean, worst case scenario, I could just evolve and see where it takes me. I mean, I've been to every biome on the map. Not every place, but every biome. So, I mean, it probably will keep me in this general area, but I can wake up in the fucking savannah again. <coughs> I'd actually really like to end up back in the jungle, please. I knew where shit was. Last shelter oasis, huh? Yeah, that basically tells me that I've found my way to the far-ass edge of the map now. Alright, there's got to be something other than coconuts and mussels that I can eat here. Yeah, and there it is. May not be the most exciting thing I could possibly eat, but it's food. All these up here. Ooh, 
Ooh. And then ditto for these. Let's see how many of these we can find. find enough, then I'll do it. And it looks like we might be able to. Let's wait for them to come back. <clears throat> for those who, for whatever reason, have gotten this far in but don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to have each one of them make a granite grinder by getting their own rocks to smash together. And uh, at that point we can all just prep aloe ourselves just have it for when we need it. Okay, I think that should be enough. Because I had four total, and I think almost every single, every, almost every single one of them had one of their own. So yeah, this is just going to be home base until further notice. There's really nowhere else to go. I've pretty much explored to the end of the world. As far as they're concerned, I've hit ocean. I don't think Africa's topography to another continent in this era. I could be wrong. My knowledge of geography isn't that great in the era I live in, much less the fucking Cenozoic era. got granite. Glad this uh, aloe shit doesn't spoil. I'm gonna take one of those. Because, just in case, don't want to get saber catted. Part of me wants to leave that entrance open so another saber cat could just come in and invite itself to dinner like that last one did. Poor motherfucker. He never had a chance. He had like three spears in him already. Okay, so. There's a monkey grab an aloe. This one's here. Grab a grinder. And 
to everybody make some aloe paste. Theirs went a lot fucking faster than mine, and that upsets me. Give me your goop. No. I don't want to trade items I want to give. Excuse me. Did you have the wrong kind of rock? Yes, you fucking did. Okay. Give me this, you dumb monkey. <laughs> Try this shit again, I guess. No, that was wrong. Chanting is bothering me. Is it pink? Oh my god, it's raining. Good. Make of it what we will. Take these, put them on here. Fetch around, grab more aloe leaves. Oh, yeah, it's green. One more round of this. And then we're good. Get our uh, eat some berries, save the game, call it a week. Yeah, we are fast approaching the time when this just flat out runs out. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm I'm not of the sort who just goes, oh, 2020 is cursed, like a lot of people do, which I think some of them do it just for funsies, but I think some people genuinely believe there's something horribly wrong with this year when it just shit happens, you know? But I will be happy to put 2020 behind me, and I know what I do have to say, and I, I try not to get super political very often, but I'm an independent, so I wasn't a Trump guy or a Biden guy. You know, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican. I actually wasn't crazy about either person in this. That is what it is. Completely different kind of bearing. But I do find it endlessly hilarious. Like, to no fucking end. 
that during the 2016 election, when Hillary Clinton lost, and her supporters were going completely batshit, and they were, don't even fucking try to deny it, um, the Trump supporters are like, oh, you know, get over it, facts don't care about your feelings, etc., your snowflakes, etc. And then, you know, when Trump lost, his supporters took it ten times harder. And that amuses me to no fucking end. That now the Hillary supporters get to throw that shit right back in their face. And that is the end of that, and I will see you all next time, everyone. Bye bye.